Hello, hang on a sec, let me try and get the stream up here. <sighs> Sorry if I'm not talking much here, I'm just trying to get the stream up on the Mac. I thought we'd continue on from where we were yesterday and uh, try uh, and get this board working. And I think I've got suspicions from what I've just seen. I think I know what the issue is. So I'll just bear with me a minute to set it up. Stream status, bad. That's not good, is it? Ooh, we've got someone. Hello, Wormetti. Uh, chat. Right, there we go. Put on live chat. Andrew, little boy. <laughs> Again, hello, Andrew. Charles Duval. Right, okay, so I'll just take you over the other side of the room. I'll need to plug it back into power in a second. We'll just uh, flip the view there. So let's just go back over here. Just bear with me a minute to set up this dodgy uh, tripod thing if I can and just tilt it a little bit. So you can see uh, the board there. I'll show you. Uh, sorry, this is the other board. This is uh, the working board. Uh, now, the interesting thing is, let me just camera again. Let's have a look at the uh, F86 here, because, <coughs> sorry, I'm choking. I guess I should just do a recap. Yesterday, we removed the buster socket on the other board, and we fitted another socket, and it was black screen, wasn't it? It, wouldn't, it wasn't given us the yellow screen it was previously. All it was, after the, literally two minutes after the stream ended, and I knew this would happen, I inspected, saw a couple of pins in the corners that didn't look great, and I just reflowed the whole lot. Put it back together and it worked. I still have the yellow screen, um, but it didn't solve the problem. So you could argue that uh, replacing that buster socket was not needed. But as I've said a few times in those last few videos, I wanted both boards to have a buster socket anyway because ultimately I'm going to let Stephen pick which board he wants and then he can have the better buster, the Rev 11 or whatever it is, on the board of his uh, choosing kind of thing. Um, so anyway, I'll show you that in a minute. And on the other one, I've just cleaned it up again today. I can show you that. And I put the base part back in the other one, as you'll see in a minute. I stuck it down. It's not got enough of the supports around the outside to make it structurally uh, sound, you know, so it could still bow a little bit. But you know what? That socket looks really good now. It looks really tidy and stuff. And uh, it's got that spacer there that means the chip doesn't sit too low. But that was nothing to do with it not working, um, incidentally. But I did see it. Thanks for the comments there and suggestions. Lots of people were suggesting to uh, put that back in because that might be the issue, but it wasn't. It was, was some... Uh, I think I'd missed a pin, actually. There was a pin in one corner I'd missed completely. It looked uh, soldered, but it wasn't. It was just a bit of flux. Anyway, so back to the schematics here. Yesterday I mentioned a few things we hadn't swapped out. These uh, chips up here, and then obviously we've got the uh, a, a PAL here, and a PAL here, I think that's one, is it? Yeah, 16R something. So those will ream a little bit. Uh, Bridget, yeah, we kind of sort of ruled that out, I think. But I came back to these here, the, the 74, well, these, the 74F86 chip. There's four gates there. So I thought, well, okay, let's start probing these. So I did this, and... Um, I saw something on one gate here, which straight away alarm bells ring. I was thinking, hang on a minute, I don't think that's working right. So I jumped over to the working board. So I'll start by probing the pins on the working board here. So uh, let me just get my magnifier. Hang on a sec. I just want to just confirm the inputs and outputs, the pin numbers there. Just go. I've also brought the Mac over as well, just so I can uh, see comments here. Uh, yeah, we've not got a massive amount of people on at the moment, but we've got a lot, well, some people. Uh, Mike Simcox, hey Gadget, how's your headache, mate? Yeah, I had a really cracking headache this morning. I was coughing, I had a sore throat. I started with a sore throat last night. I started thinking I was coming down with COVID or something from going out yesterday. Um, I don't think so. I think uh, I'm just super tired and run down. Um, now finish work for a good month or so, handle a little bit good. Uh, enjoy the time off. Um, try and help uh, anybody you can, you know, neighbours and things and older people if you have the opportunity. Uh, I was thinking actually, the next time I do have to venture out, if I can't get a home delivery, I'm going to go and knock on uh, some of my <coughs> elderly neighbours' doors actually and ask them if they want me to get them anything. Um, and I'll just try and get whatever I can. Uh, anyway, right, so back to the diagram here. Uh, as I say, I'm just going to have a quick look at the pin numbers. So, uh, hang on. Yeah, it's like one, 
two, three is an output, four, five, six is an output. I think I've done that count with its soul on this day, man. It's so small, the print. Yeah, I think one and two are inputs. So as we start looking at this chip here, you can see the logic probe here. And incidentally, um, you know, if you're using like I am an ATX power supply here to power this, I've just got it connected to the, you know, you've got a ground connection and a VCC connection. You can connect it elsewhere on the board, but on something like this, you may need to, because you've not got any dip chips, well, you've got the odd one that you could clip the positive onto, but it might bridge and short something out. So you perhaps need to solder, you know, find uh, somewhere to solder a couple of wires to. These are a good point for the grounds. Um, and then you can just take a VCC from one of the, you know, top pins of one of these ICs here if you need to. Um, so anyway, this is the uh, F86. Uh, hang on. I'll try and rotate it just so you can see that. I might need to zoom. I'm just having a look on the camera. Yeah, you can see that. So pin one pulsing. It's an XOR, this. So it's exclusive OR. If you, it will only give you a high on the output if only one of the inputs is high. So we've got pulsing. We don't know in terms of the uh, synchronization of that pulsing, do we, in terms in respect to the next pin. So let's look at the next pin. That's high. So the fact we've got a high there, that on its own is enough to give us a high, provided this pin here is not stuck high. Now, isn't this pulsing? So what I would expect to see there is uh, a pulsing output because it's only going to go high when, ne when, when only one of these two... Uh, signals here is high and since one of them's constant it, logic says that when this first signal here is going low as it's pulsing we should see that low represented on the output and can you see that uh, I'm trying not to show anything here we do it's pulsing both lights are lit so that's normal uh, I'll continue around here so again we've got an input this is the next gate again it's pulsing and the same sort of story here we've got high so again because we've got a constant high the only time we're going to see high on the output is if that first import is pulsing or low and it's pulsing so we should say pulsing and again we see pulsing I'm not going to go around the rest of the chip uh, I'll just switch it off I'm just going to carefully pull this board out of the way and we'll connect up the uh, sick puppy uh, buster board Hang on, let's just move this out So we're not testing like for like in the sense that this one's got kickstart rather than diagram in and it's got RAM, the other one didn't have RAM. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's not going to make any difference to what we're looking at actually. Um, well because it, it's strange as you'll see, the, it's not behaving as it should do. Um, the interesting thing is I'm sure I probed this before and it looks alright so whether something's degraded and got worse on that IC. Uh, and funnily enough this, I, I looked back at things and I think this board here um, does have uh, had a, a chip next to it replaced. That's the other thing I was thinking, is it's one of those that I started coming back to Occam's Razor, you know, the simplest explanation being the most likely. If it wasn't something I'd done, it was going to be something prior to that, i.e. that the battery had done. So this is why I thought this is probably more probable. <clears throat> probably? Probable? Is that, yeah, I'm not sure why I'm saying the same thing twice. But uh, yeah, probable that uh, this is faulty rather than this, because there was no corrosion here. There was a bit of corrosion up there, so yeah, I guess you can't just completely rule it out. Um, and the other thing to consider with something like this, corrosion job, is it could have had a yellow screen many years ago, decades ago, and then someone went, oh, it's broken, I don't know what to do, I'll just put it in the loft, you know, and then it corroded. So, yeah, that was on my mind as well, thinking, well, you never know, it could be something like that that's failed uh, many, many years in the past. Um, so, hang on, I'll switch it on. And I'll tell you what I'm getting on the screen, yellow screen. So this is back to yellow screen. In fact, I'll show you that, because you might not believe me. Oh, hang on. <laughs> yeah, it goes yellow screen and it goes black. It's trying to show that I'm uh, not telling the truth here, but watch. You've got three seconds, yellow screen. So, yeah, uh, and as I said, for the people that have perhaps just joined and missed the start, the issue yesterday was a missed a pin. So I just reflowed a few pins there, cleaned it up. A few minutes after the stream, and lo and behold, it was uh, yellow screening again. So, uh, yeah, I hadn't do anything bad to that board or anything like that. Uh, and the sockets come out really well. I'll show you the thing in there in a minute anyway. So this is the... Uh, thing we want to look at here so I'm just checking the camera so you can see that um, so again pin one is an input pulsing just the same on the other board yeah pin two hang on I'll be careful I'm not sure these I will create a fault pin two is a high so as explained we've got a constant high 
the only time we're going to see the output go low is if this was pulsing or high, if it was high then it should be low um, and if we look at that third pin it's stuck high that's not normal that is not normal let's just check that again we've got pulsing we've got a high and we're getting out a high that is not correct i am darn sure that is not correct as confusing as XORs are, that, that's pretty simple to me. So looking at the next gate, we've got pulsing uh, and a high. And we've got pulsing. You see that? That's confirmation, really, that when you've got a stuck high there, when you've got pulsing as an input, you should see pulsing as an output, not a high like we see on pin 3 there. So, uh, now I don't have uh, an F86 spare, but uh, you know what I'm like. I'm just going to take the one off the working board. I'll order some up, we'll take one off the working board, so I'll do that now, I'll take both boards over there, we'll remove the one off the working board, put it onto this one, and you never know, we might fix it in this uh, video, so I'll switch that off, uh, disconnect the video again, disconnect the power again, so it might not be a very long stream this, hopefully we can do this whole thing in about 20 or 30 minutes, and then... Uh, move on to some other things maybe. Right, uh, let me think about this. I need that board and I need the other board. So, yeah, I do risk, uh, as I keep doing these streams as well, ESD damage by carrying things around and stuff. You've got to be careful. But, I mean, I'll be honest, I've never had any issues myself. You know, ESD is a genuine problem that uh, can plague some people. Um, part of it is, is you know it's, the, it's what you wear yeah, I don't know there must be something to do with your actual body skin resistance and all the rest of it because I'll tell you why when I was younger I used to get static charge you know discharges for anything if I had a jumper on and I was walking about I'd be like it's getting zaps zaps off everything I touch zaps off the light switch zaps off the car etc but as I got older and certainly in this room in this house I can't generate static if I try. You know, I've got a woolly jumper. Someone yesterday said, oh, woolly jumper, you shouldn't be wearing a woolly jumper when you're working on that. Um, I don't know what it is about my skin or whatever, but something changed, like, I would say about 15 years ago, where suddenly I never got, I can't get static shocks from anything. I can be like rubbing a balloon or something with a fluffy thing or something and still can't generate, you know, I just can't generate static. So, yeah, but you really should take uh, static electricity seriously. Because all it needs is that, uh, you know, one time you forget an ESD or a strap, and if, like, say, you've got some static in you, next thing you know, you've killed uh, a chip on your board or something. Um, right, so uh, what am I doing now? Let's just bring the laptop over so I can check the comments. Over. Right, now, I'm hoping what we've uh, just seen there is not a red herring. Um, and there's some sort of explanation as to why we don't see it pulsing. I can't think of one. Please uh, start posting away now if you've got uh, any thoughts about that. I'm just going to plug the uh, power in. Hang on if I can. I can't even find it now, where is it? It's uh, on that side of the phone. There we go. And I'm just going to relocate the uh, camera up again here. So the iron's on hot air, let's just increase the hot air because I had it at 100 degrees before for cleaning up that buster socket. I'm going to go up to 420. It's probably a bit high, you could do it a lot less than that, but you know what, I've kind of got... Uh, it's the temperature I go with, uh, generally, when I'm working on uh, these boards, MVS boards as well, it, it just seems like a really ideal temperature right so let me think about this so this is the board at work so we're going to take that donor chip off first uh, and i'm quite happy doing this because i know that this board other than needing a bit of more cosmetic cleaning up you know you can see it's a bit dirty around here there's a bit of copper exposed this does work 100 percent. everything works on this board it's waiting for a chip a real time clock chip uh, and i may swap those two strips of turn pin with a proper socket i didn't have one at the time but that's all that's uh, required on this board, it's uh, 100%. Um, so let's just get the hot air in. Just stand it off here. Shouldn't take very long this because it's a super small chip. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is just get a little bit of captain tape just over 
that there and the wire. I just don't want the wire melting. Um, we'll do the same with the, uh, it's a bit we used from yesterday here. On that sticker there, it's just got the model number barcode or something on it. Uh, have we got some of the cap to take over that pin there? I think I have. Yeah, just like a little bit of it blocking that pin. So we'll uh, find my little pointy tool. Yeah, airflow is way too high. On this R10, I tend to go, let's like, say, around 400 degrees roughly, and airflow at two. But uh, it's going to vary what you're doing and stuff, and obviously, different hot air uh, stations are going to be different. You can't always go off what I'm telling you. 420 degrees um, might not be what this is actually outputting, hence why I'm having to set to 420 degrees. It might be at nearer to 360 or 370. Wouldn't surprise me. So, uh, yeah, we'll just uh, have a go around here. I'm touching that now before I even need to, really. You could just, to be on the safe side, uh, Captain Tape off that uh, gal there as well, you know. It's just about mitigating the amount of you know, damage from heat. So I'll just have a read of the comments. Thanks for everybody that's joined here. Thanks, uh, Spitfire. Sorry, I'm not watching what I'm doing here. I'm going to melt melting that jumper, aren't I? Uh, it might be an idea. I'm the, eating the wrong chip there. It might be an idea. It's because I was reading the comments. It might be an idea just to focus on what I'm doing, and then we'll read the comments. See, those are going fairly shiny already, those pins. These have been reflowed. There wasn't a massive amount of corrosion in this particular part here, I have to admit. So I am a little bit surprised that, seemingly, this chip and the chip next to it have both died due to the corrosion. Because I don't think they've got anything in common, actually. They're doing different things. So it's not like uh, one has killed the other one. We're nearly there, I think. Losing track of days again. What day is it today? Is it Tuesday, I think? That reminds me, if it's Tuesday, there'll be a modern vintage gamer video to check out from yesterday that I've uh, not got around to uh, watching yet. That is not moving. That is not moving. Got to remember though, the legs were corroded on this, so maybe the pads are a bit of an issue below it as well. But anyway, it was the output that was wrong, so it's not like a, it's just a bad connection. I'm darn sure it's not. Wow, that is really being resilient. I would have expected that to come off by now. Oh, there we go. It just literally jumped off. Look. There must have been just one pin just hanging on there. I mean, it wasn't really pressing hard. So, we've got no damage. Let me just uh, check the comments. We'll just get the uh, other board, get the chip off, get that one on. Give it a two on. Hello, Mr. Bob, Mr. Watman, Zerks Renew, NGL82, Yuma Hoshi, Remax, glad to see you live again. Thank you. Uh, man, we're loving the live streams and the content. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, and gang. Yeah, we had Chucky and the gang on last night as well, and I'm so sorry I didn't respond. And, and Stephen Leary, they were both suggesting lots of things, and I was just so focused on what I was doing, I really didn't get a chance to um, respond and stuff, and I just missed so many messages. Hey, Bert, you slow down, Chris. People, uh, people that fidget and jump them down have more problem generating static. When you jump up in the sitting position, yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, I do, like I say, I do worry about it. I worry about it when I'm not wearing. Often, I will be wearing an ESD wrist strap for a lot of the repair stuff I've done on this uh, this board and the other board. I did wear the mm -hmm. ESD wrist strap, but when it comes to carrying a board across the inside of the room, I tend to like hold it by, like that in the middle, and I'm careful. And I touch the light switch here, as I say, and there's a radiator in nearby as well that's earthed. Um, the other thing I'll do as well is once I put the board down, typically the, power, the ATX power supply is nearby, I touch it. 
I always touch it before I switch the power on. And again, I'm just, it's a subconscious thing. So I'm, a lot of the time I'm taking precautions in some ways, but not always uh, remembering to mention it and stuff. Uh, anyway, so there's our chip. We need to, uh, what have we done with it? No, it's gone over there. Remove the solder on the underneath of that in a sec. So let's just uh, lift that out of the way. I'm just going to pull that caps and tape off. We'll reuse that on the, the next board. So we'll bring the next uh, board in. Um, don't need the cap. Well, actually, I could do the cap on that there just because there's a couple of uh, labels. Look, I really don't want to affect those if I can avoid it. Yeah, you could, like, say, protect that jumper there, but you know, we're all right because I'm using a fine nozzle, low air speed. Um, we're okay, I think. Gr gr uh, Vincent GR, greetings, gadget people. Thank you. Hello. Uh, that BG Ollie. Oh, BG Ollie's here. Nice to see BG Ollie. You should check out his channel. He's uh, an amazing guy. He really is. Um, he not only does electronics and arcade board repairs and things, and he does them to component levels. Some of the repairs he does on arcade boards really impress me. He's uh, a, nice, a smart, clever, intelligent, musical guy. The musical side of things, you know, he does a lot of, um, what's the word, uh, cover versions of uh, certainly um, popular music for TV gaming. You know, lots of music, uh, game music. Uh, and he does such a great job of it. He really does. His, uh, some of his uh, songs are just fantastic. Especially the ones where he uses his banjo and stuff as well. And it's just like, you wouldn't think he'd be able to pull it off and uh, make it sound the same as the original. And you know what? It's always usually better. It's usually better than the original. Even with uh, some of the instruments you might not think fit. He blooming well do. He makes them fit. He's a great guy. You should check that channel out. Banjo Guy Ollie is his name. He's got two ch two um, accounts, I think, two channels. You know, he's got the one that primarily for his music. Um, so you should sign up to that one as well. But also the arcade boards and things like that. And he makes some of his own little um, chip replacements and things. You know, a bit like I did with the Neo Buff and Vertex done on numerous chips. Um, he does the same sort of thing for arcade boards, where some of those custom chips are no longer available. He's got a little PCB he's created himself with some Jelly Bean Logic or PLD or something on it to replace some of those uh, chips you can't get anymore. So again, you know, it might look like I'm pressing hard here. I'm not. I'm just literally the weight of the tool here. When it's ready, it'll just, it'll like that the one, it'll just come up. If I can try and lift it, I'll try and lift it, but there's little to... Hold on to there, hang on. I'm just trying to reposition. Sorry, I'm missing the comments. I'll check back again in a minute when we get this off. Is this going to fix it? Post below, what do you think? I think there's a good chance there might be some other issue that I've still not seen. Um, I'm not even sure what... We can look at that in a minute. I'm not sure what the consequences of that signal, the output of that XOR there. What? Which one it is? What's the signal? I can't even remember. Is it one of the ones that goes into Buster? It may well be. Um, I'm guessing it's a clock. I'm guessing Buster's not got one of its clocks that it needs for something. Um, which would kind of make sense. That's coming up, isn't it, I think? Is it? I can't see. I'm not that close to the board. Normally, you see, I'd be pretty close to this. So I can actually see what exactly what's going on. There we go, it's coming off, look. There we go. And again, no pad damage, I don't think. So it was nice to see. So let's let that cool down a bit. We'll just catch up with the comments and things. So I'll scroll back a little bit. Uh, SMD must. Yeah, I do often enough, but I still hate it. Not sure what I've missed there. Uh, uh, individual chips are a lot more susceptible to ESD damage when not on the board. Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. Uh, Captain flux and patience is what you need for SMD. Yeah. Uh, and practice as well. Don't just expect you're going to jump into something you've never done it before and do a good job of it. It'll just take a bit of practice. The flux, uh, you know, will help a lot as well. Yellow screen means we'll live a failure. Yeah, yeah. it's a nigger. Uh, certainly being work, seen worse for work, and I think it's really bad. I find SMD takes uh, adherence to procedure prep, OCD levels of preparation and cleaning. Yeah, I think if you're going to do things professionally, you know, you're going to get you're going to get to that point, aren't you, where you can do it procedurally, where you know you do everything, um, get a really good result. Um, 
BG Ollie. Uh, all right, all right enough. I'll send you <laughs> the check soon. <laughs> yeah, you, I tell you what, if you've got any arcade boards you want to sell, <coughs> let me know. I'll buy one off you. Um, trying to find them is hard. I'm trying to find ones that are, you know genuine is hard as well. You see lots on eBay and people have removed you know 90% of the chips off them and stuff. The customers in particular, and then trying to sell it off us. Not sure what's wrong with it. May have a fault, you know. It's like it's got some main custom chip missing that you're never going to find anywhere. Um, is anyone here with TS100 soldering iron? Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about that TS100 retro game revival. Dennis, yeah, he's saying he's uh, he says a TS100. Um, Mike Pearman, I think it will fix it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think logic says from what we've seen. It looks like that's the issue, doesn't it? <clears throat> it looks like that's the issue. It's just whether there's another issue. Um, how, how can you work from that floor? Yeah, it's uh, very, very difficult. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. This is how I've had to do this. It's, it's embarrassing, and it, but it's just the way things are. I don't have a big house. I don't have lots of space. This is the only room I can do this in. There is a table. Uh, I've got to show you in a minute. There's a table up there. And what I'm trying to do is get to the point where I've, worked, I've cleared enough space in here that I can actually migrate things to the table. Um, for one thing, it's not helping with my legs and my back and stuff as I'm getting a bit older. Um, yeah, working from the floor is not ideal at all. Uh, and of course, you're next to the carpet. <laughs> you want to be as far away from the carpet as possible. Uh, that's the uh, irony. Uh, Rayuex. Uh, I learned so much from you when I watched you fixing Neo Geo boards back in the days. You sent me some acrylic Neo Geo case parts. So you use them. Yes, I have not had a chance to do that. That was one of the things I forgot to mention yesterday. I'll show them in a minute. Because, it, again, it's just on my list of things to do. What I want to do is rehome my MVS, uh, my 1FZ, in that acrylic shell. I'm just so, so, so sorry. It's took so long to get to the point where I'm, I'm nearly there. It's, it's, I'm nearly there. Once all these Archimedes are out of the way, that is literally top of the list. Um, but that was like a year ago, a year ago, 18 months ago. Um, anyway, that board's cooled down a little bit now. So, well, a lot. Let's uh, just get the desolder braid on it. And uh, and clean up that uh, donor chip. Uh, hang on a minute, I'm just thinking now. I might need some advice. Oh no, there we go. That's the one I've just removed, isn't it? I only dropped a clanger there um, because I wasn't sure which one I'd put taken off and which one I hadn't. So let's just stick a red cross on that, and uh, and then I know that's the one I've removed. That's one of the problems we're doing a stream. <laughs> like I said yesterday, I can't concentrate on what I'm doing. So that's got a red cross on it. We know that, that we think that's bad, suspected bad. We've got the good one there. Technically, could have damaged it with uh, just the hot air. You know, you've always got to think that. Uh, it's, it's unlikely. Probability wise, it's unlikely. But just like ESD, heat, you can damage something. It may well be just, just working, but then you heat it all up, remove it, and then it's not. Uh, but that sort of thing is very rare. You know, it might happen like one in a thousand times. You take a thousand chips off a board, and maybe even more than that, maybe 10,000 times. You know, one in 10,000. Uh, but there is a chance. Anyway, there you go. Solder removed. Um, I'm not even going to clean the flux off the underside, the solder off the underside of that because it's very level. It came off pretty easy. I'll, I'll inspect it now with magnification. Uh, yeah, you're going to get ear cam for a second here. Hang on. Just to uh, see how flat that is and try and straighten it. And it's pretty flat, that. And I've got to apologise about that video yesterday because when I was, I don't think I'd ever do a fitting of a chip like that again without proper camera equipment and stuff and, you know, doing it on the PC so that I can uh, cut over to, uh, I don't know, other sources because there was so much in my ear on that yesterday. It was watching it back, it's like, oh my goodness, I could cut about an hour of that video out. Um, Hang on a minute, it's, it's on there, it's dead straight, but you know what? I'm a, a bit of a perfectionist, and it's like there's more space on one side than the other, even though it's centrally aligned and perfect. Um, yeah, that's about as straight as I'm going to get that, I think. Uh, I'll try and zoom you in a little bit. There you go. That's not you, actually, is it? Uh, hang on. I might be able to get closer shots using this this way than I'm able to do with my normal camera and macro. Anyway, we just touch the pen, not the pad, and uh, oh, hang on, and then find the solder's not melting. Just flow. Crazy amount of solder. See that? Uh, and then I'll do the same here. You're not going to be able to see this to the side. It's, you know, touch the pad, not the pen. Crazy amount of solder. Got two pins bridged together. I'm not bothered. 
And uh, well, where's that tube of flux gun there? It's on there. Oh, it's exciting. We're nearly there. Is it going to work? I bet it doesn't. I bet I get another yellow screen. In fact, I bet I get a different colour screen. I bet I get a purple screen or something there. Something that's not that's not even valid. You know, you look at through the list of uh, possible screen colours you can get, and it's like red, yellow, green, blue. What do I get? Purple. Well, that's, that's that's what's coming. <laughs> I hope not. I hope it works. So let's just uh, get some solder here. And uh, which side did I anchored that side? So we'll start with this side here, and we'll just drag along like that. So we've got too much solder there, so I'll remove the solder from the uh, in the tip and then just bob into it, bob out. See that? Reflow for good measure. That's not bad. So that's my side done. I told you it'd be quick. If I wasn't waffling, it's like I say, it's literally a two-minute job with these. The hardest bit is removing them. But even that only took a few minutes, so it's the same thing. I'll flip the board around perhaps just so you can hopefully see that. I might need to zoom out a little bit because you're going to be looking at the Zorro slot. Let's see if we can just move the camera over a little bit. Where's the channel now? It's over there. Yeah, let's see if we can get a bit closer. Ah, oh, there we go. How close is that? That's enough. Um, and again, so you see the bridge there? All I've done is remove the solder from the iron. Hang on. Bob out like that because it's got lots of flux on it. Um, hang on, we need to do the rest of that side. I've realised I haven't done that side yet. So I've got some more solder on the tip, and we'll just uh, drag along here and then bob in and bob out. I do that because you'll turn up, you know, you get a smoother flow of the solder towards the end of the pin. Uh, just looks a lot better. I'm just looking through the uh, camera here. I can see these first three pins could just look a bit better. Yeah, I found a new source of annoyance now that if I start looking at things through this camera while I'm doing it, I'm like, well, that's not quite as even as the one next to it. Maybe I should reflow it again. It's just something else to annoy the hell out of me. Anyway, that's all right. Let me just uh, zoom back out. You can. And if I uh, just put you above, uh, where's it gone now? Lost it. It's over here. Yeah, zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you can see it's just very fluxy. So without further ado, I think we should uh, go and test that actually, because I'm uh, really eager to see whether we get a yellow screen. Uh, so let's catch up the comments. Uh, I get really here experience with Sega Genesis VA6 boards. Um, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with the Genesis system? Uh, someone said, what's that tape? Captain tape? Yeah, high temperature resistant. Thanks, Rio X. Uh, uh, no, fully see it. Hey man, love your videos. Thank you very much, much, much appreciated. Uh, still the same content out of the Final Fight arcade board. I'm having no look at figuring out. Yeah, I'd like to start looking at some arcade boards, but yeah, it could be uh, a bit of a learning exercise to say the least. So, oh, hang on. I nearly lost my uh, phone then. Disconnect the power for the phone. So, again, let's uh, carry the board uh, on the MacBook as I just did. Hang on. <coughs> Over here. Just trying to stabilise the camera there. So, I'm just trying to think, is there anything missing? There's nothing else off, off here, is there? No. So, it should just be power. And that should be it. It's things like, it's times like now where I start thinking, I hope to God I got that chip on the right way around. Let's see what happens. Is it going to be yellow? Oh my God, it's not yellow. It's not booting, though, is it? No, I think that should boot by now. Uh, now I'm even more confused, actually. Now I'm even more confused. Because that chip's on right. Uh... Oh, hang on, it's on. Wow. Oh my God, yes. 
sweet. That is just fantastic. That took ages there, and I just—I was just remembering something in the back of my mind there. Chucky was saying yesterday it could take up to thirty seconds when you've not got hard. That is just fantastic. I am just so so over the moon with that. That's just brilliant. So the next thing we'll do, let's switch it off. Um, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm kicking myself. I didn't check that sooner. But I'm sure I did. I'm sure I probed it previously with Logic Pro, and I couldn't see anything unusual. So let me just make sure that's uh, on. Pro you know, it's, it, because you can misline it by a, a row of pins. If you're not careful when you put one of these on, you can be on one row, and you know what, you, what happens there is you start feeding five volts into something that's supposed to be ground, and before you know it, you've got an IDE fault or a dead drive or something. So let's uh, let's try that again. I'll just uh, point you there. Keep your arm that LED. So if I switch it on. Let's see what happens. Oh yes, yes, yes. I think that's booting from hard to snap, is it? Hang on. Yes, I think. Yep, yep, yep. So I'll point you back at the screen. I'm so pleased because, uh, yeah, it's been stressing me out no end, that yellow screen problem. It was uh, an awful experience having to change that socket, you know, stick a socket on there. I'm not sure it was booting now. What's going on now? It's taking... No, it is booting. It's doing something. Maybe there is something else weird going on with this because it flickers every now and again. It stops now. Maybe we have another problem. Maybe this has got an IDE problem. Because I'm trying to think what else... Uh, what else... There's nothing else needs to be on there. It's missing the real-time clock, but that wouldn't cause a... Hmm. Let me connect a floppy drive up. Let's just take a step back. Let's... I mean, it could even be the compact flash card wasn't in there properly. Let's just remove that, just for the moment. Um, we know the CPU card's all right. Let's just connect the floppy drive up. I think the other thing I'll just do as well, while we're here, uh, is we'll just fit this RAM hard. Just point you over here a little bit. Uh, again, it should be wearing an ESD receiver. Yeah, uh, what I did with these is I searched for uh, some RAM and I found uh, a number of these Gold Star ones. So I ended up just getting Gold Star. They're all they look the same. There's just one of them that's got gold plating. Can you see? As opposed to the uh, uh, tinned or silver plating or whatever it is, it's probably tinned. Um, and I put the gold plated one down here just because this one's the, perhaps one of the sockets that's uh, not as clean as the others. So let's uh, connect the floppy drive up. So. Stick sys test in. I'm hoping that at least this boots. Um, yeah, the fact it didn't boot from the IDE is worrying me a little bit. So I will have to borrow the cable from there. My power supply, I'll just connect the Logic Pro. This power supply has only got one of these. I think I did have two at some point. I must have cut it off perhaps when I made the uh, CD32 power uh, adapter for this board or something. So I'll switch it back on again. No, I'm not sure that's not sure that's booting. Not not booting normally. There is oh it is no it's booting normally. That's really weird. There's like a delay. There was a bit of a delay there. It doesn't normally delay like that. That makes me think it's maybe the IDE. Um so uh I'll connect the mouse. Sorry, the camera's gonna be wobbling a little bit while I do this, guys. I mean, this is the thing though, you make one bit of progress, you know, it's like one step forward. Hang on, the mouse isn't working now. It's like one step forward, one step back. You, hang on, why is that not working? Look, just uh, point you there a sec. I'm just thinking, I'm just wondering whether... Have I actually tested the mouse on this? Yeah, I've had it going up and down, but not left, right. Yeah, so I think we've got a problem there. That's something else to deal with. So we've still got uh, a problem with uh, these 166s here, uh, serial to, uh, sorry, parallel to serial shift register. Um, one of them is responsible for the uh, mouse, um, I think. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, and the analog port on the other one as well, I think. Um, so if that's, uh, you know, if you've got a missing connection around here because of the corrosion, 
you'll have problems with directions. And yeah, I think we've got that. I, I, despite the fact I said I've tested everything on this board, I vaguely remember now, when I, when I tested the mouse, when you move the mouse up and down in the test there, it's going up and left, up and left, it's not showing down and right. So you can use it in diagram to go up and down the menu, that does work, but this is the first time I've been able to boot anything with a proper cursor there. And I think, yeah, that's just showing me that we've got a, a problem there with the mouse. Um, what I can do is, thinking about this, I could connect my CD32 keyboard. Um, hmm, I'm not sure if there's any advantage to that. Let me try and boot a game. Let's try and boot a game. Uh, the only thing we can't see there is the memory, but I know that Diagram reports the memory is okay. So let's, uh, let's take that out. Let's put June in. And uh, I'll try and power cycle it again. Let's just see what difference, uh, you know, what happens there. Will it boot? I'll cut the sound up as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if the initial delay is because it's looking for the hard disk. Because that's, uh, that's booting, as you can see. Let me just see if I can just put this camera here a sec. Might be able to uh, just tilt it the other way. Yeah, I think that's working. Well, I know that's working. Yeah, no twanginess or anything like that. I was sure the audio circuit was all right on here. Um, just because I've tested it fully, tested all the connectivity, it's got new caps, and I tested the shorts and resistance across caps and things like that, it's all all right. Right, let's try the hard disk again, I think. You never know, maybe the hard disk was uh, just a... Uh... Yeah, sorry I lost you there for a minute. I uh, pressed something on the phone, I think. So uh, let's just switch you back. Uh, yeah, so I'll switch it off. Let's disconnect the floppy drive. We'll just try the compact flash again. I'll reseat it. There could be a fault. I do remember Stephen right at the start saying one of these needed uh, a new uh, gal or something. So maybe. Maybe that's the issue. So we'll uh, just reseat the compact flashcard there and uh, try that. I mean, to be fair, it was starting to boot, but it didn't complete its boot, did it? So, uh, yeah, that's looking all right. Let's just check it again. Yeah. Switch it on. Let's see if anything else happens. So you can see. Uh, sorry, you can see that. Yeah, you can. You can see it, it flickered a bit. Flicker again, look. Flicker. Flicker, flicker. Oh, there we go. That's doing more than it was last time. Maybe it's working. Maybe not. I don't know. No, we got an error. I'll show you that. Oh, I didn't want to see that. So, oh, I don't know. I'm just wondering, it could be something to do with the shift register down here. If we if we still got an issue. I don't think the mouse would cause that though. I don't know. I mean it's it's, it's doing stuff though, isn't it? It does start to boot. Why would it crash out three quarters way through boot? Hang on, it's come up now. It's come up now. See that? I don't know. I'm uh, perplexed. I'm going to point you upwards if I can. I'll see if I can try and not lose the stream again. Yeah, sorry, you pointed a bit too high or a bit too low. Uh, and again, we can't move the blooming mouse, can we? Uh, oh. oh, that's so annoying. It's like I'm so close to being able to test something. I want to test a game. I want to run a game from the hard disk. Let's just try and power cycle it a few times and let's just see see what happens with the hard disk. Because uh, I've not got a, a great deal of confidence just now that that hard disk is, is 100%.
It's flickering, it's flickering away. I mean, the other thing I would point out here is these compact flash cards I'm booting from are not right. And what I mean by that is this one's the one from the 060. Look, it's booting it. Yeah, this one's the one from the 060. So there could be a library in there, something, I don't know, something it's not happy with occasionally. Because I'll admit, when I've been testing this compact flash card on the other board, it's been a little bit hit and miss in relation to uh, loading some games. I'm just going to bring the Mac over just so I can uh, see the comments and we'll just uh, catch up. I'm just wondering how how I can test that further. What I can do is if I go and connect a keyboard, maybe I'll do that. If you guys are sort of happy to just uh, wait for a minute while I go and get a keyboard, we can do that because we could use a keyboard then to control the cursor and uh, painfully load a few games and see see what happens. Um, but it is booting. Let's just boot it again. Just third time for good measure. Just leave it off for a minute and switch it back on. What I'll perhaps do is while I go and look for the keyboard, it'll only be a minute or two, I'll, I'll boot it again. And you can just uh, wait for it to boot again, just to see if it boots that fourth time. It could have literally just been the, the compact flash card not sat into that slot right. It could have been that. Yeah, it's booted again, look. That's the third time. So, uh, let me just read the comments. Uh, Chris and Jim, I'm impressed with what? Hang on. Oh, yeah, about 40 arcades back in the day. Nigel Rhodes, 40 arcade boards. Good God. That is nice. I'm impressed with that. Um, so, yeah, Mike Pell was right <laughs> when he said he thought it would fix it. Retro Game Revival, uh, no, apparently the technology of the screen itself will allow you to heat. Uh, anything else is about BG Oli, I recently binged on MBS mobile repairs as I got people to fix a car. Stuck on Watchdog Reset, not fun. Yeah, it's a pain, isn't it, when you get a uh, Watchdog on a Neo Geo? A diagram, well, not diagram, what's it called? SMK uh, diagram for the uh, Neo Geo is just amazing. And again, it's like diagram on the Amiga. Um, what you've got to think of as well is how hard these systems would have been able, would have been to fix. You know, think rewind 25, 30 years when these systems were mainstream. How hard were they to fix back then? Well, you know what? I remember being, being with the trade and actually getting schematics. You had to buy them. You know, you couldn't you couldn't just get schematics like you can now. The internet didn't exist. Um, a lot of the time you'd try and reverse engineer things just by looking at the chips and looking at the pinouts of those chips. You'd get one of those. I have like a little bible with all the different. TTL and CMOS chips and often when you came across a board like this for the first time you'd be like oh my goodness what is doing what here and you know you'd you'd have an insight into certain chips from what you'd read in magazines you know like you know Alice does such a thing so you know you, you had some basic information there and then you'd be looking at what's connected to it and trying to follow connectivity and the traces on the board and stuff if you're really lucky um as we were with some, I, I bought some of the Amiga schematics myself when I was in the trade. Bought the ones for the service manual for the five hundred and the two thousand. So I had those, and you know uh, that helped a lot, obviously. But it was so much harder than it is today. Now you can just look on Google, and you can find people who've had the same repair, you know, repair logs. Well, the one thing I will say is not very many people share and repair logs themselves. You know, you get lots of people fixing boards. They don't really post what they've done, what was the actual fault, and what was the cause. Um, but anyway, it's much easier these days because of things like Diag ROM and SMK uh, Diag ROM on the Ami on the Neo Geo there than it uh, used to be. Uh, who's Dean? Look, I'm the China Pro. It's 5G. It's not 5G. It's a virus. How was 5G going to relate to a virus? You know, I don't necessarily agree with that saying shut down all 5G because it's uh, that's the thing. It's just coincidence in terms of releasing 5G or around that time or whatever. It's, I, I fail to see how... Because what you've got to realise is virus is an RNA, RNA, isn't it? You've got DNA and RNA, and it's just this little piece of RNA with a, something around it, some sort of encapsulation. So any kind of microwave... Um, you know, transmission for, to do with, uh, you know, uh, mobile phone mass, 5G, whatever... How, how's that going to have any bearing on anything? Unless maybe it's altered its RNA because it just happens to be a dangerous microwave or something. You know, I don't know. I seriously doubt that it would have even been released if it was uh, not safe. Um, 
Anyway, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it'll turn out 5G is not safe for various reasons. I've got no idea. But anyway, yeah, as someone said, that's it's not really the place to do, to be discussing whether 5G is uh, good or bad or healthy or not. So I'll just power cycle it one more time. I'll go and get the keyboard. You just watch that. I'll be back in about a minute. Just give me a minute. Right, I'm back guys. It took me a bit longer than I expected there. Good thing is it booted up again. Yay, that's like four or five out of four or five. <laughs> I've lost count. Um, so I'll just bring you back uh, down to the ground level. Hang on. I'll just point you down there a sec. So uh, I've shown this before. It's uh, from RetroCable.com. This came from SuperDuper, the guy who manufactures the uh, TF330s on uh, Amibay. If you want an accelerator for your CD32, go and uh, see him. So you can see it's uh, got an adapter here, and this will work with uh, an A4000 or a CD32. Originally, he gave it for me for my... Uh, switch, switch this off. Switch it, uh, plug it in while it's off. He gave it uh, to me for a CD32. So you, you never know. We might have a keyboard problem now. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's see what's going on. Put you back up here again. Try and tilt this without losing the stream. Hang on. I just want to stay balanced now. I'll zoom back out again. What am I filming there now? I'm filming the bubble wrap. Look, oh god, it's my face again. I really didn't want to go back on camera. There we go. Hang on. Oh, I can't get it to stay there, uh, stay balanced. There we go. Right, sorry, it's not good. I know it's all unprofessional, but that's as good as it can get. Uh, and it just keeps uh, it gives us something to do, doesn't it? That's the main thing. So I've got the keyboard connected now. The caps lock works. So I've got to try and work out what the uh, keys are now. Oh, there we go. Can you see that? I can move the cursor. So let's go and find uh, the game. Try and find the Amiga key now. There we go. It's the Alt. Uh, there we go. Back up here. So yeah, it's a bit painful to use keys, but you know what? You can. It's one of the th nice things with the Amiga, actually. I was mad about that with the Archimedes. You've got to use. Uh, as much as I love the Archimedes, you've got to use the blooming mouse. Um, maybe some of the later versions of Risk OS, the added keyboard support, and I don't know. So let's try going into. Hang on. Try going there. Uh, yeah, there's a slow movement as well. I think the control key makes it go slower. The shift key makes it go faster when I'm holding down the uh, start key. Here. It's going to be nothing to man the beast because I'm using, let's like, say, an IBM PS2 keyboard instead of um, the proper one. How do you get the right Amiga up? I can't remember now. What I want to do is kind of like right click. I'm just trying my best here to try and work out how to do a right click. I can't, can't do a right click. I'm just going to have to just try and navigate. What I was going to try and, oh, hang on, dragging something there. What I'm going to try and do is, I wanted to do is try and sort them. Uh, uh, I went to A, didn't I? I don't want A. Oh, hang on, we can try. We can try Aladdin. Let's try that. Uh, or Alien Breed. Oh, God, there's that many icons here over top of each other. I can't see what's what. I don't want that. Or that. It's, it's alien breed there, I can see it. It's just not clicking, there's too many icons. Oh. That's alien breed C32, isn't it? But it's 3D. Yeah, you need a faster processor for that. Uh, see what, let me. Go back out here, let's just close that. 
Oh, this is painful without a mouse. What we could do is try and work out what the mouse issue is. We could try and fix that on the stream. It might take a while. Um, let's just look at P. I'm going to look for Pinball Dreams or one of the Pinball Dreams games. I do know that they don't all load from this compact flash card, but that, again, like I say, is because it was being built for an 0060 uh, CPU, so it's no wonder that not everything works off it. Why are all the ones with PI on top of each other there? It's like everything I look for just happens to be on top of everything else. All the other ones are not. I can see Pinball Dreams there, I can see the thing of it. P. Oh, I'm going to try and find the right click. Let's see if I can work out what it is. Should, should be the other Amiga key, shouldn't it? Something popping up there at the top, isn't it? I wonder if it's because that mouse is in. Let me unplug that mouse. It might not be. It might be that the shift register's messing it up. That's a possibility. Yeah, I think the shift register's messing up the right mouse click, actually. Um, let's try Pinball Magic. I don't know what that is. I've never tried it. It might be awful. Let's try it. Okay, I'm going to learn something. It's from Lauriciel, isn't it? A French uh, developer. I'll just uh, catch up with the chat. Well, it's working. <laughs> I can see it's all kicked off about 5G in the chat. Let's, uh, let's try that. Someone just mentioned the serial driver there. Uh, you can also the serial drivers use uh, serial mouse on the Arky if you don't have an original mouse. All oh, right, okay, cheers, Arcos. Yeah, this is awful. <laughs> it's probably all right. It just looks really super basic, doesn't it? I don't know how you know you start it. I've pressed the exit key there. Let's just see if we can find uh, something more uh, familiar. Hang on, what's the thing on there? So. See pinball dreams there, let's see if we can get that. If I'm lucky, it might be the top icon. Yay, pinball dreams. Let's give that a go. Might crash, might not. Because I was struggling trying to get some of the pinball uh, illusions and uh, pinball fantasies uh, working actually on, from this compact flash card. But many of the other games work alright. Sweet. That intro never gets old. I think just the general presentation of these pinball uh, games from uh, Did or whatever they are, Digital Illusions, is uh, amazing. I just love them. I was watching the intro to Pinball Illusions, I think it is, the other day for ages. So they just like mesmerised all the little things spinning around and listened to the amazing music. Fantastic. So I think we can uh, use a keyboard here. Yeah, we can. Let's go like that. For oh, hang on a minute. How do I get function keys? Oh, there we go. Thank you. F4. Yeah, I had to press the function key key button on the keyboard to allow the function keys. It's because I've got a crazy Microsoft keyboard here. Yeah, I'm so happy because this is now fixed. This means. Thanks to Stephen Leary, I now have an Amiga 4000 motherboard. Because both of the boards are pretty much 100%. We've just got the mouse, obviously, to fix on this one, the real-time clock. You know what? Those are going to be easy to fix, really. 
I might not be able to do it on camera because it, you know, it'll be a bit time consuming. I can perhaps show you some of what is required towards the end of this video in a few minutes. Well, I'd look at uh, PCV Explorer. I'll just test a few connections. You know, if it's just one connection missing, maybe I can fix it on three. Might need to turn that down a bit because you might not be able to hear what I'm saying here. It's going to be pretty loud. I'll just uh, catch up with the chat. Oh, good God. I mean, it's luck of the draw, isn't it? That ball just went straight down the middle. So let's quit out of that if we can. There we go. Um, what we can do now, I've got a keyboard. As I can, I'll just I'll put you back down there again. We'll connect up the floppy drive. We'll just test it with both. Because uh, what we should have, what we should see, previously with the floppy drive, it took a little while to get going, didn't it? And I think it's because it was kind of looking for the hard disk. So what should happen? Uh, well, in fact, we can't do both at once, can we? Uh, oh, it's a pain, pain that I don't have enough connectors here. I'm going to have to get an adapter. But anyway, we can just connect uh, the compact flash again. We'll connect up the floppy drive. We can boot, assist test. And we'll just uh, make sure that 16 meg of uh, RAM is showing up there. And uh, run some of the... I know still got the ID connector then. Run some of the tests in uh, assist test just to see what we can see because we can start that by you know pressing the relevant keyboard short course there uh, so i point you back up again Hang on. oh this camera is driving me to despair there we go hang on why is it loading june or left june Let's that out. switch it off uh, it's having a there because I removed the, uh, the disc while it was loading. Put this back in. Switch it on. So hopefully that should give us a sys test. Yeah, dice as NJL82. So the guys behind Pinball Dreams, they ultimately it's a Swedish development, uh, you know, software house, wasn't it? They eventually I think got bought out and uh, uh, they got bought out by Electronic Arts, didn't they? They're still the same company now, is it? Digital Integration uh, Int Illusions something. DID, did uh, no, sorry Dice, yeah not did. I don't know where I got did from Dice. Um, we went Battlefield. I play a awful lot of Battlefield. So let's uh, press F1. Memory. There you go. 18 meg. Look. Uh, I don't know. You can see that. I'm just trying to zoom you a little. Up. Oh, yeah, not that much. Yeah, you can see 18 meg. Two meg chip. Uh, 16 meg. Fast. So uh, that seems to be all right. Let's uh, have you test all, F1 test all. Let's just leave that going through a bit. Let's just check these messages here. And then we'll perhaps go and have a look at that mouse port. See if we can work out what's uh, what's going on there. It's just going to be a bad connection related to that top uh, 166, I think. The bottom 166, the one nearer to the Sims, that's responsible for serializing the option jumpers. So, uh, you know, there's a, uh, I don't know what, what jumper designation it is on the board, but there's a series of about eight or ten, I think it's ten, pins there, and those uh, are used to configure options. Uh, it's something that was never used. It seems to be like a something that they put in there in advance, maybe, of the A uh, AA uh, chipset stuff, maybe coming in at some point in the future. That's perhaps what those option jumpers were for, or planned to be used for. 8-Bit Dreams, hello. Hi, nice to see you here. Uh, floating man, don't you have a desk? Yeah, I do. But uh, for various reasons, I've just ended up uh, working off the floor. I, 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 as I said earlier in the video, my intention is to get onto a table at some point soon. I just need to finish working through things, tidying things up in here, so clear space, clear the space off the table, I guess, first of all. Um, on that table is a giant box of joysticks, and not just joysticks, every control, pretty much every system. I've got a huge amount of controllers to look at. Uh, you can't question working as a genius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I see you. Well said, Sean. Nobody can disagree. Carpet is the best place to be. Um, yeah, it's not good for your knees. <laughs> Put it that way. As I'm getting older now, I'm starting to feel it. Uh, I really am. Especially since I start doing those Neo Geos. Those Neo Geos from Mike Pearman, that was what really started to be the end of the carpet for me. <laughs> the amount of crazy hours that I spent working on those Neo Geos, those MV1 AX boards. Um, at the end of that period, I was like, I can't do this anymore for the carpet. I need the table. <laughs> I've got to be on the table. Prior to that, never had a problem because you know what? Most repairs are super quick. You know, so if you look at, you know, if I was looking at C64 today, I might spend 
a few hours at most, and then it's done. It's fixed. It's working. The thing is with this Amigas and Archimedes, it's obviously you know these are sixteen bit, thirty two bit systems, um, a lot more sophisticated SMD components. You spend a lot longer, crazy amount of time working on. Them. So the corrosion damage, corrosion damage is just the worst kind of fault you can get, um, without a doubt. Um, Jan Beta, hi, or Jan Beta, Jan Beta. Nice to see you, uh, Jan. Hope uh, everything's okay. In uh, is it Germany? I think you come from Germany, don't you? I could be wrong. Uh, I think my back would uh, not like working on the floor. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm getting old. I need to get off the floor. I think and onto a table. Um, and of course, for the benefit of the tables, I can leave all my stuff set up there, all my tools and everything, and equipment now. Ultimately, I'd like uh, to get more of a permanent working space, but that might need a house move. I don't know. You know, something like Mark fixes stuff. He's got like a nice little work set up there isn't he with benches and things and he's got all this test equipment out and that's the other problem i have in here that i can't have all my test equipment out you know i can't have my scopes and things out i just don't have the room for it things constantly move around within my uh, working area and uh, in and out storage uh where are you at? i always work wherever the flow takes me <laughs> Uh, tables are wonderful invention, Chris. They've been around for a while. Yes, you know, Stephen, Stephen Leary made me laugh yesterday. I haven't responded yet, I haven't had a chance because I've had so many messages and things and I just haven't had a minute. But one of the comments he posted after that uh, live stream went up yesterday is, Chris, someone appears to have stolen all your furniture. <laughs> because it's just like carpet and stuff everywhere. Carpet and consoles, that's all you see, carpet and consoles. Uh, you need a man cave, yes I do. Um, we'll get there eventually, but you know what, I can manage like this. And that, that's the thing, you know, if you can manage what you've got in life, manage with it. You can aspire and aim towards other things, but um, sitting and getting stressed or, you know, standing and getting stressed or whatever about the situation you're in doesn't solve anything, does it? You've got to try and do the best with what you've got. Um, and like I say, aspire for better things. So at some point we'll have more space, at some point we'll get a cave. My ideal move really is to get a house with four bedrooms and I'll have an entire giant bedroom, the biggest bedroom for all my stuff. Our benches and everything set up and crates in the corner and all that sort of stuff but you know what it might take me 10 or 20 years to get there but trust me i will one day you'll see me you'll go wow can't you i finally got a cave and he's got a desk and all his kit you know his kits out and uh sorry i don't didn't really mean it that way his equipment's out uh and uh everything's good uh instead of the you know cringeworthy comments like oh i can't believe this guy's working on the carpet Rub woolly jumper why are you wearing a woolly jumper anyway You've seen enough of that, so that's working. So what we'll do is we'll take the board over there, we'll do some connectivity tests. I'll just show you quickly on PCB Explorer, you know, the PCB and how I'm going to measure that. We'll clean up the flux off there as well. Uh, before, I'll just uh, bring you over here. The chat we had earlier mentioned, uh, hang on, oh, I found a PlayStation I didn't know I had there, look. <laughs> I've got another PS1. I mentioned yesterday I've got a PlayStation. I've also got the, the newer PlayStation, so I've got two of those. Uh, and I think that's in the same box, actually. Let me just move this out of the way. Uh, uh, if we just uh, put this down here, move that out of the way. Yeah, I'd, I'd forgotten completely about that. I've looked at one of these before, but this is another one. Yeah, so this is the nice acrylic stuff. Uh, was it Ray UX? Was it you that sent this? I think it was. Uh, so you can see you've got all these uh, acrylic standoffs and things here. Um, some joystick gates here. You might not be aware of what these are. An arcade stick, uh, one of the key uh, things on this, and I'll tell you what, I really, if you want to watch a, joyst a, a video about joysticks, arcade joysticks and understanding them, uh, the Highlander, who is there now, has got, I think he has, has got a really good video. Um, check out the Highlander's channel about arcade sticks, because he explains the difference. I'm sure it was him. Can you just uh, let me know, uh, Highlander? Uh, Mine's gone blank, I can't think of your first name. Is it you that did that? A video about these gates and all the different ones and how they work and the benefits and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, you can't link, you can't link, but just check his channel. Maybe tell us what the description is, uh, Walt, Walter. Uh, tell us what the description is of the video and then people can find it. But these gates, it's a, an integral part of the joystick, you know, uh, something like that, an arcade stick. Inside there, there'll be uh, a gate here and you can, uh, you know, chop and change them. And you can see there, that's like a, an octo gate. It's an octagonal one. Um, and the centre of the stick goes on that. So depending on what kind of gate you've got, depends on how easy it is to get diagonals and different types of games use different gates. Like Robotron, for example, has a totally different gate than that, I think. So you've got a round one there. See that? So that would be, I don't know, perhaps... 
I don't know what the benefit is. You'd have to watch his video to see it, but it's a good video. Um, so he's provided me with a load of those different types of gates for arcade sticks. Those are really nice. So that's one product he uh, creates and sells. This is the front piece here for the or the side piece for the controllers. It's got a bit of mould on there. Look, it's been in that box so long. It could even be a bit of burn from where it's been uh, cut, but that'll clean off with a bit of plastic cleaner, I think. Yeah, that'll come off with a bit of plastic cleaner. Wow, well, that's gone weird as well. Maybe it is a bit of mould. I think some mould settled on that. It's got to be mould. Because it wasn't like that when I looked at this last. Let's just uh, let's just take that over there and uh, try and clean that up. Because, uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned with that, actually. It's, uh, yeah, that Amiga board shouldn't be there. I've just realised I left an Amiga board standing on the side there. Let's uh, just point it down a little bit like that. Uh, let's get the plastic cleaner. And in fact, it's got a protective, uh, it's got the protective thing still on it, this. So, you know, it's not being peeled off. So I'm not sure if it's what that is, actually. Anyway, let's just try and uh, clean it a little bit. Let's just wipe it with a gentle wipe. It's really weird, that. It's really weird. I don't know, it's not, it's not coming off, is it? Maybe it's just the film. Maybe it's the film. Is there a film? I'm sure there's a film on this. Or is there? Well, maybe I'm seeing things here. No, there is. Look, see that? There you go. There's a film look. It's, I think it's the film that starts to break down. Yeah, can you see that? Look at that. Nice and clear. So it's this film. Just with a bit of age here and probably a bit of mould or something. You know, it's not the driest of rooms, this. Or the, not really, it doesn't get wet. But uh, occasionally we just, you know, it gets a bit damp in here. Um... So yeah, if you ignore the brown bits on there, so you can see, that's uh, for an MV1FZ or something, I think. You know, you've got your cart slot bit at the back there, you've got the police in the background, um, and your MVS logo here, and obviously, you know, you use the other bits of the case there. Uh, if you just walk back over here again. Yeah, so you've got a bottom piece there as well, and another side piece with the power switch and the video uh, DIN connection there. Yeah, that's the bottom of it, I think. And uh, it's also got these let individual letters that have been cut out, I think. Those were the bits that were probably uh, cut out from there. But, you know, it looks nice, actually. Well, it will look nice. That brown bit you've got to overlook, because, like I say, it's just the, the protective cover that's gone a bit brown. Um, anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. So we'll have a look at that at some point, like I say, and I'm, I'll either stick my main uh, MVS into that, or I'll uh, put one of the other ones in. I might even do a giveaway of it or something at that point. I'm not sure yet. Um... Just uh, shove this back over there. So, we'll take the board over there in a sec, as I say, and uh, check the mouse port. See what we can uh, see if we can identify what's wrong there. Uh, laser cutter dust. Yeah, it could be. Uh, that burn mark just could be from laser cutter. It might have been brown like that originally, and I've never noticed it. That's possible because it has been uh, laser cut. Uh, Okay, I don't see any questions there. I might have missed them. So, hang on a minute. I've just found a piece of acrylic that I didn't put back in that box. Let's just stick it back there. So, if I point you back at the screen there, so you can see it's on pass 6, uh, all 16 meg, no problems at all. So, I think I think this board has got a good uh, bill of health, just a real-time clock and a mouse. So, let's disconnect it. Disconnect everything. I mean, I'm still a little bit concerned that it didn't boot from the hard disk to start with, if I'm honest. We're only going to know whether that's an issue or not when it's had a cold test, because uh, it might be that something around here, maybe got a bad solder point on one of the PLDs, the gals around there, because those were refitted. They were taken off the other board, actually, as part of uh, diagnosing the fault on the other board. Disconnect all this. So, let's uh, wheel it over there. I'll set you back up over on the mat. There we go. Now let's bring the Mac back over and uh, we'll have a look on PCB Explorer and just do a couple of connectivity tests. But before we do that, I think we'll uh, just clean up that uh, flux off the board there because it looks awful, doesn't it? Where I uh, removed that, uh, that's what they're chipping it again. Got a piece of captain tape there, let's uh, get rid of that. So 
Where are we? I zoom a little bit, I think. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. A4000 are extremely expensive on eBay. Yes, that's why I'm so, 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 so super, uh, super grateful for Stephen uh, coming up with the idea of uh, you can have, have one of these boards. Um, it's brilliant. It's a, such a lovely, uh, generous uh, donation. All I need to do now is find a, a, some sort of case, and as I said yesterday, a bridge board. Uh, and Stephen uh, suggested something that I missed, um, I spotted it later, is if you're going to get a bridge board and you're going to spend, you know, the crazy £200 that they seem to be, um, get a PCI one, because then you can plug PCI cards into it. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. As I said yesterday, if anybody's got a PC bridge board for one of these and they, and they want to sell it at a reasonable price, not £200 blooming pound like Analogic, then uh, please let me know. Um, I might have to just get one of the Analogic ones. I don't know, but I certainly won't be the next few months. I need to wait to see whether, whether my job's stable or not. Because with everything that's going on with COVID, as I say, two months from now, I might not have a job yet. I uh, hope I'm not back in that ball park again after only having sorted this out since last October, you know. It won't have even been a year, will it? It won't even been six months. Uh, anyway, we'll just see. Let's just see. So you can see that's looking a bit better there. Um, I'll do what I always do, just get a little cap of IPA and to brush it because you can't get the IPA from under the sides and around the pins and stuff. It can look clean, but then you inspect it with magnification, you can say flux all around it. It's um, you really got to do this. And the consequence of that is it flicks everywhere, and then you've got to wipe the wider area as well. But the net result is it looks good as new when you're finished. Well, if you've done a good job, I've done an okay job there, I think. Bit of paper towel. And let's just try and uh, mop that up. Yeah, you can see it's spattered on here. Look, now we've uh, test. Now we've fixed that. You can see there's some green marks I put on there because uh, I had a mentioned yesterday. I put those on to indicate that I tested all the connectivity on that side. So on Alice, I only did that one side there next to the corrosion. On Paula, I did the three sides there that were primarily affected. Um, and those need a bit of a reflow. I will get some uh, flux and reflow those later. Um, I think that chip there had a green blob on it as well. We know that's all right now. Yeah, that's not looking... It's not looking too bad, that. You can see that. That's looking all right. There's still a bit of flux on there. I can see it. <laughs> I can see it on the camera. I told you this camera was not going to help me. It's making me see things that I don't normally see. I'll be faffing on with it forever when I look through that camera. There we go. It's looking a bit better. See that? Um, and you can see I tinned up some of the traces around uh, here as well. You know, they were pretty corroded. There's still some more work there because there's a few coppery look looking bits in places and things. I have not finished this board by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, anyway, let's uh, now test some connectivity and just see, see if there's anything obvious to do with the uh, mouse. I'll, t I'll look at the other port later. Um, I'm not that fussed about the other port just now. I just want to see if we can get the mouse working. Because you know what? If we can get the mouse working, it's going to speed things up uh, considerably, isn't it, in terms of testing. When you've not got a mouse, as you've seen, it's painful. Painful trying to navigate with a keyboard. Um, right, so I'll get the Mac up. I'm just putting um, PCB Explorer on here. Uh, I'll show you this. I'm putting the camera over. I have to zoom back out again and point you up and we do uh, Amiga, hang on, can't even type now, Amiga, PCB, Explorer. So you see the website there, AmigaPCB.org, fantastic website. Yeah, I'm not sure if you, yeah, you can see the screen there, can't you? Uh, you select your Amiga model, so it's not got all models, it's got like one 500, which is the 500 plus, I think, the Rev8 boards. A600, 1200, two different revisions, and A4000, two different revisions, and the A4000T, which is the tower, as well as two CD32 revisions. So if you've got any of those uh, Amigas that have got, you know, problems, corroded boards, corrosion in particular, this is where it's so, so, so useful. Uh, I've just selected the tower one, I wonder if it's the other one I want. Yeah, so we've got a Rev B board here. There's a Rev 2, which is the early production one. I think it's got chip RAM. 
um, soldered on instead of having a sim. So the rev B is what we have, and if we uh, click that, it's a bit slow on here. It's much faster on my uh, main computer. Might do a short live stream on that over the next few days because uh, there were a few people said they'd like to see what uh, PC build I'd gone with and stuff. Um, it's not going to be very exciting, but it, it might pass a bit of time. Um, so you can see the top of the PCB layout here. If we scroll down, the uh, the, the place that gets corroded with these is th these wires here to do with the controller ports. Those are the controller signals. But ultimately, you know, they, they go down these, they come out of the wires and down these little traces here. Um, some of them do. I think some of them come on the underside of the board. And they lead to these uh, the 166s here. So if we just uh, hover over that, I'll see if we can zoom a little bit so you can see maybe what it's actually saying there. Me. Constant adjustment of camera here. Yeah, so you can see hovering over that pin, uh, I think it says five volts, which is that's it's bound to be. That's a, a, a seven four series. It's uh, uppermost pin there. It's going to be five volts. But if we go along, you'll see that one says uh, underscore MLD. That's active low signal. Right. So you've got right. M dot. Back. Left forward io reset active low that one's going to be ground s clock that's the serial clock a disable signal so it's not going to be any of those it's going to be it's going to be one of the directions it's going to be we need to look up down left and right i think uh, we may find one of the buttons doesn't work for the next thing but i don't think the buttons go through there i think it's just the directions isn't it yeah let me just check this one this one, I think, is just the option jumpers, the second one down. Yeah, S opt. That just relates to the option jumpers, that one. So let's uh, let's look at the first import, which is that one there. So we've highlighted that uh, right one, and if we scroll up, you can see the blue trace goes all the way up here to one of the wires there. Uh, and ultimately, let's just switch to bottom, bottom view of the board. Yeah, it goes to a cap. You can't quite see it. Let me zoom back out again. Yeah, it goes to a cap on the underside of the board, the edge near the ports. Uh, oh, it's a resistor. Oh, is it? Hang on, it might be an inductor. What's an ER? ER? Let's have a look what that is. Yeah, it's a resistor. It goes to resistors, isn't it? And on the other side of it goes to the port. So, Mm, okay, let's switch back to the top side. Let's just check the top side stuff first because that's going to be the most logical. If anything, the corrosion is going to be where the 166 is. It's going to be connections to the top of the chip here, probably. So, uh, if I uh, point this back down here. Uh, we'll just put it on beep. Let's move the board uh, back a little bit so you can uh, see it. So I appreciate you can't see both things at once. So the third, hang on, yeah, the third pin along from uh, here. So not the one nearest to you, the third one there. Should go to one of the wires up here. Uh, this is where it's super time consuming because you've got to keep looking at the diagram and then start counting pins and wires and things. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's like eight down. It's almost where the gap is. I think it's that one there. So if I measure from where that one is there to the third one here, and we don't have a join. Hang on. Yeah, we've got a join there. So the thing with this one is this one uh, needed new joystick ports. So it could be something I've missed here. There could be a damaged trace. You can see we've got the old fixed wire here because the, the, the connections were really, really, really bad on that. Um, so hmm, anyway, I'm not seeing anything obvious there. Let's just for the moment just assume it's going to be someone on the top side. So we've checked that one. Let's just check uh, down. Let's see where the down one goes. Hang on. Because as memory, I think as memory is uh, telling me, I think when I tested this last time, I actually tested the controllers in diagram. I think it was saying up and left were working, right and down weren't. So it might be that uh, 
yeah, one of those has got a problem. So back is the fourth one down. Yeah, fourth one down. So let's just uh, test the fourth one down here. It should go to one of the third resistor down here, I think. It should go to there. Yeah, so it goes there. So this is our back direction. It's going to this, uh, I think it's a pull, pull up or something, is it? Let's just see what's, is that ground? No, it's not. That must be five volts. Let's just test that. Uh, yeah, it's going to a pull-up resistor here because all of those, that side of those resistors there is all connected to these. I don't think you can see that. Can you see that? Here. Yeah. Those resistors there, the bottom side of them here, all connect to 5 volts. And it was this third one here went to the fourth pin on the uh, 166 there. So it's got its uh, pull-up. But it should also go to one of the pins at the top. Uh, and this might relate to the other port, actually. Yeah, it's one of the ones in the middle, sort of, here. So, I'll try and measure from that pin. Fourth one. Let's measure these here. Yeah, it's that one. I guess maybe you could measure the 75 ohms here. I'm not sure whether... Because they've got a 75 ohm resistor across them, haven't they? I mean, that might be the case, it might be it's coming across, uh, no, hang on, that's not how it's working, is it? It's coming down here and then it's going to the chip, so it's on the other side, it's where it's coming out on the other side, via um, here, could be the issue. Yeah, anyway, I'm just going to continue testing around, let's uh, just have a look and see what other ones are on there, so we've got, that was back zero. I'm just looking to see what, what uh, which pins go to what on that uh, shift register there. We've got that one. I'm just wondering if port zero is the mouse or is it one is the mouse? Uh, I'm not sure. I need to follow it to the actual uh, joystick ports themselves to see which one's which. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this on live stream. It's going to take me some time to go through and uh, check all that sort of stuff, I think. Um, because I'll show you, you know, if stuff goes over the other side of the board. That's the thing. It's like it's all very well following the connections like this on the same side, but then you've got to follow it all the way up here to the via, and then you've got to flip the board over by looking at the bottom view. And over here. You can see we've got that uh, connection on the other side. So I'm just going to have to do that. I'll do it off camera because it's going to take me some time. I want to go from the, the pin to the resistor, through the resistor, to there, to the other side to make sure it's joined up. But it just means like literally holding the board on its side, trying to measure one thing on one side of the board, just turning the board slightly onto its, uh, you know, over a little bit so you can see the other side and trying to measure on the other side. It's really painful to do. Uh, it was probably 20 minutes to do that. Um, let me just uh, catch up with the comments and we'll just uh, leave it there, I think. Um, I can always do another stream tomorrow or later or something. The main thing is, within this stream, um, we have made some significant progress because I didn't think we'd get it working, actually. I th yesterday I thought, I'm not going to be able to fix this. It's going to be it's going to be that little uh, beast there. Oh, there's another one. I saw two. It was two. Uh, it might be this one. There are two related to uh, Super Buster here. Um, and that was my fear, but yeah, thankfully, I think we've proven it's not. Um, I'm just not, still not 100% confident with the IDE, if I'm honest. I'm not confident with the IDE. Uh, someone says fix the bridge. <laughs> yeah, I think what's going on here with this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be either one of the connections on these ports that are broken as a result of the, you know, when they came off, let's say lots of pads just disintegrate because the corrosion one, this this one here in this area, was horrendous. It was really, really, really bad. Um, and in fact, some of the stuff around the audio uh, section on this one was really, really bad as well. This one was painful to do. The first board didn't need so much work in terms of all this, you know, like, like I did here, cleaning up all the connections with solder. I'll show you uh, just near the audio section here. You can see 
it's a similar horror story here. You know, I had to tin all sorts of things in, different op amp, all sorts of things needed to be done to that, to get that working. Um, but with, uh, yeah, this, the other one, uh, in general, didn't need anywhere near as uh, much of this, uh, you know, traces fixing and things like that. Um, we got away quite lightly in this area here. On the, the other board, as you'll see in when I released the video for that, it was really scary, the damage around here. And that one's ended up with a bit of a bodge around there to fix various things. But you can see on this one, we are missing that. But you saw before that this is working with the 16, well, 18 meg, 16 mega fast, 2 mega chip. But that's one of the transceiver chips, that position there, um, for the RAM. You can see, what a mess. I might try and cl clean that up a little bit further, but there's no pads, so all pads have gone. And that was before it got to Stephen, uh, someone else. Uh, did that wonderful uh, repair work there. Um, but anyway, yeah, so hopefully uh, that's passed some time and hopefully you found it interesting. Thank you very much for all your comments and things and thanks for supporting. I'm sorry I've missed so many messages. Uh, Troll, uh, get this guy blocked, yeah. I was gonna allow Nefers, oh wow, thank you very much. For that uh, 20 uh, knock, uh, is that Norwegian Krona? I think it is. Check nine U975 for bridges. Uh, hang on a minute, let's uh, let's just do that. It's working, by the way. Um, I'm not sure what that comment was in relation to, unless you spotted a bridge. U975, where's U975? Anybody know? Uh, I'll tell you what, let's just go back over here. Going you up here. Uh, one thing you can do with PC Explorer, if you can't find something, just in the search box up here, U9, hang on, 975, it says there, so HCT166, top layer, click it, it's, yeah, it's the one we're looking at, hang on. Uh, yeah, that's a good point actually about solders, because I did reflow uh, a lot there, let's see uh, if I can point you down. A little bit here and uh, I'll see what I can see so you can see um, there's lots of things tinned here I don't think we've got any bridges there I don't think we've got any bridges there yeah this bit here needs a bit more work I want to clean these resistors up a bit more and then there's some things to sort out here look um, and the odd little thing that perhaps needs a bit more tinning got some traces here look a little bit coppery those I'll tin these up tin that up um, Again, up here, just a little bit, maybe. I mean, the audio side, it's, it's not too bad here. Often I'll leave this area. It generally, if it works, you don't generally need to worry about doing too much to it. Um, but with the problems, I've had all sorts of problems with this. This is why I ended up having to turn all this up here, and these have been off, and that's got that's a new one now. That's a replacement. That reminds me, and I need to go and order one of those, because we're one short, aren't we? That means the other board doesn't work just at the moment. Middle chip. Why isn't it middle chip? It's not about... Oh yes, those there. That's deliberate. Sorry, that is deliberate. That's a deliberate short. Um, it's this is um, reads the option jumpers here. This will come off. This is going to come off here, and I'm not even going to put it back on. I'll just clean it, clean up the PCB here, clean up the traces, remove that series of jumpers, like it in the other board, because you don't. Uh, yeah, Nigel Rose, I see your problem then. Um, th this they're both low. It's, it's going low here. The way this second option jumper thing works here is. It reads, I'm trying to think, the first two bits have got to be a uh, low, hence why we've got these these first two pins here are the first two bits that are red, and they've just been pulled low. Normally, they would go to some traces that go under the board that go for resistors to pull them to ground, but it's just a quick fudge fix way of doing it, um, because nobody's ever going to use this option jumper. It is just pointless. What I found, uh, and this was from, uh, what's it called? Amiga Sys Test, that Amiga Sys Test we used before, that floppy to you know diagnose various things if you run that this option jumper here and the fault round here if there's anything wrong with that corrosion wise it can either cause the system to not boot at all or if you do get it to boot by some minor miracle by having some of the options passed but not others it then says that the alice is one revert one version and it's the lease is a different unexpected version it's some really cryptic message i posted about it on twitter um You'll see it in the video when we come to do it. Um, so yeah, you've got to literally just feed low on the first two inputs. Those are just hard-coded ground low. 
Um, and then the other ones are high. So the other ones along here will just come to this here and they go to the resistors here. And I've tested the connectivity there. There's no issues. It was just literally these two here that were faulty. Uh, so yeah, that's not a problem. That isn't the issue. Hang on a sec. So uh, let's just uh, get PCB Explorer up. I can perhaps show you that. Uh, let's just go back there. Yeah, so if I just uh, cancel those two, hang on, and we click on those two pins that are shorted. Can you see here? They're both blue. I'll just, let me zoom you in a little bit. Hang on. Yeah, you see they're both together? And they go to a via on the underside there, and that via just literally goes to ground. I think it probably goes through a resistor to ground, but you know what? It doesn't matter. You can just pull it to ground. It's fine. So, uh, yeah, but well spotted, you know, that could have been something worth uh, checking out. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. So, I'll just have a look at the comments again. Hang on. I was choking your mic over again. <laughs> Roy Brown. Uh, well, everything has a voice. Everyone has a voice. Some are just louder than others. Uh, I wasn't the person who spotted it. Ah, okay, so sorry. Yeah, sorry if I missed whoever originally uh, mentioned that. Thank you very much, uh, and thanks for uh, giving that little uh, donate. Not little, big, big donation. I shouldn't say things like that. It makes people think they've not donated something when they have. They've donated a huge amount. Any donation is just so welcome. It seriously is. I get super excited when I see one dollar on Patreon. If I'm honest because every single dollar makes such a difference to be able to do this stuff. Um, that order, I, I mentioned yesterday, I ordered some new, um, this stuff here. Um, showed you this yesterday, hang on. This, it's like three pounds, it's like two pound 80 or something for one of those. Um, so I ordered, I think three of these last week and a, a pack of Flux, you know, I had six tubes. Well, I've gone through like two or three of those tubes already. And this one's nearly done. You can see uh, how much is left of that. There's a little bit here, it was like, it was full. To start with so i go through these things super super quick so you know what even a dollar makes a huge difference every dollar uh you know every few dollars gives me a new roll of uh, dissolver braid um yeah so very very much appreciated um anyway i uh, can't think of anything else uh, i can show you just now as i say i'm going to try and fix that off camera and uh, maybe uh, probably tomorrow perhaps we'll reconvene and I don't know just have a look at a few games or something I could perhaps show you something else or we'll look at something entirely different perhaps um, any questions or anything before I go or anything you've been shouting at me that I've missed G'day from Australia Jake and Manic thank you very much uh, yep hope you have a hope you've got good weather there at the moment it's, uh, it's not too bad here in the UK actually it's not raining you just can't go anywhere uh, Rewex, uh, four euros. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Yeah, Rewex is the guy. Uh, as I say, we showed earlier that uh, acrylic MBS uh, thing for. So we'll have a look at that at some point. Uh, 39k. Keep safe and sane there, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, I'm doing the best. I've got a bit of a sore throat at the moment, but as I say, said earlier, I think that's just uh, from talking so much. Uh, advice on clock fixing, please. What advice? What clock fixing? What a real time clock or a clock or a crystal clock? What kind of clock? Um, difference is night and day though. I need uh, so little of that quality stuff. You take care, Chris. See you tomorrow. Um, yes, real time clock. Oh, yeah, I'm probably still fixing real time clock. Yeah, hang on a sec. Let's have a look at that then. Um, I mean, I can use this as an example if we just uh, hang on. Yeah, not the Mac. Uh, there, if we look at the real time clock here, uh, and I might just have the schematics down. Let me see if I can find the schematics because of uh, and that, that was I cut myself off yesterday. I was you some good advice. One thing you want to do is the schematics to start with. I printed off a page at time, I was like, oh, I've got a problem with the sound, let's print off this page, you know. Oh, I've got a problem with Bridget or Buster, let's print that page. Well, actually, just print the whole bloody thing, it's about 14 pages. And when you've got corrosion on one of these, you know what? You can end up looking at most areas of the board. You're going to be jumping all over the blooming place. And it's so, so much more handy when you've printed every page off. Um, so this is the real-time clock circuit here. This is the schematic part. Sorry, there's something leaking through here. You can see that. So you've got the uh, Rico RPC uh, 5C01. And this is not going to be any dis much dissimilar to any other Amiga. An 8000's got just a different chip there. There'll be 
similar things you might not have a, a 174 like this here this is a 74 hct 174 i think um and this if you look at this chip as a start th this is the one that's down hang on screen service kicked in this is the one down here it's the bottom chip here near the battery in this instance so you know you could look at the schematics here uh, and measure connectivity it's obviously harder to do it from the schematics you, you can see um that one's less a one of the address lines it says a31 colon zero and then actually if you look zoom zoom into that it actually says like a something a3 a4 a5 or something so you could measure those to the rom because the rom is going to have those address bits on there and test you've got connectivity but the easy way is with pcb explorer certainly for 500 plus if you've got real time clock on that or uh, probably a two i don't know there's a 2000 on here you'd need to use the schematics on the 2000 but it's a case that on here of let's like, say just clicking on a pin there uh you can see that's red so it connects to that component there and you'd need to just flip over and have a look on the underside and see if it's connected anywhere else it is connected to a component on the other side as well and measure on continuity tests and do that all the way around to make sure you've got all that done the other things you you could do if you've got a uh, an oscilloscope obviously measure the crystal uh, clock now the clock on this chip here goes uh into the top two those two pins there that top one there's a uh, supply i think i think that's the where the battery and the positive rail goes yeah it is uh, and then these two pins here connect to the two pins on the crystal and on one side of the crystal you're gonna have a capacitor between uh, between the crystal and ground and on the other one you're gonna have this variable capacity here and ground and you can see that better reflected in the uh, schematic here actually if you can find it at the crystal so if you look at the crystal here this is the crystal uh, there's the two pins I was talking about on the chip there One's going to one side of crystal, one's going to the other. And as you say, you'll typically have a capacitor that goes like 22 picofarad usually. It's funny this one's got two there, it's got a 56 as well on one side of that resistor, funnily enough. But anyway, yeah, a capacitor on one side and ground, and you'll have a variable capacitor on the other side and ground. On a Neo Geo, you, you, some of them have a variable cap there. Sometimes it's just like a 20 picofarad or 22 picofarad cap. Um, uh, yes, we got it working, Mahat. Yes, we did. Um, so, what else would you want to do? Well, you could, let's say, so you could scope that and see if you've got a 32.768 kilohertz sine wave. If you have, you know your crystal oscillator circuit here is working. What tends to happen with these, and I'll show you this on the board, other than, hang on, yeah, other than just corrosion breaking traces, one of the things i've seen ha happen on numerous amigas now is if you get corrosion in here which 99 times of 100 happens it's i've seen it on the 2000 i've seen it on 500 expansions uh, i haven't seen it happen on the 500 plus but i've seen it happen on these 4000s as well you get corrosion in there it's all green and tarnished you look at the you measure the crystal and it's like it's not oscillating properly it's not oscillating you don't get you're not seeing that sine wave that 32.768 kilohertz sine wave uh, you get some uh, deoxy in there and twist it with a screwdriver a bit of ipa flush it out do it a few times you know a bit of deoxy a bit of uh, ipa flush it out a few times and just move it left right left right left right try not to adjust it too much from where it originally was it doesn't matter that much to be honest it's just a tiny fine adjust for the the, the crystal um, and nine times out of ten you'll find that it springs back to life if it still doesn't work in a scenario like this i'd be replacing the chip and you know what that's what i've ended up doing uh, i don't want to spoil it because it's part of the reason one of these repairs was really difficult as well you'll see it in the video but if you yeah if you're not getting any further swap the real-time clock chip out um, and then look at its supporting ics is there anything else around it well as you saw on that diagram that 174 yeah the 174 here is uh connected straight to it so that 174 would be the problem as well beyond that it can't be anything else if you've tested the connectivity you know that connectivity on your schematics matches exactly what you're seeing on the board you've tested every single connection and the way you can do this is obviously you know it takes time sometimes to test each connection but as you do it draw a line across that trace and then move on to the next one and test everything don't just assume that things look okay measure them make sure you do have a short uh, and if you do that you, you can't you can't fail you'll always find the fault it's just super time consuming doing all that measuring around uh so also one final quick look at the uh, chat here just in case i miss anything else uh yeah some people have left already so yeah thanks uh, for anybody who's uh, has left and uh thanks for everybody else who's stuck around and has been watching the stream uh thanks for all the uh, comments uh tips donations suggestions 
uh, just the general chat and banter. It's I'm sure it's uh, it's been interesting there. I've seen you guys chatting amongst yourselves and things. Um, thanks for the donations. Thanks for everything. So I'm going to uh, get off now, guys. I'll uh, try and do something tomorrow if I can. Thank you very very much. I'm so pleased we got this working. Um, yeah, stay safe. Bye.